Dear students, I now take you to another long exercise, the peripheral smear study. Be informed that our experience with the peripheral smear study is hardly sufficient. In fact, you will start learning this after you complete your post-graduation. Anyway, the importance of it is given in the enclosure. It is a long exercise. Spotters can be kept. Charts can be designed from this. Very important part of the viva versi, particularly in hematology. MCQs can be asked and for theory also it is of paramount importance. So it is not just the 10 marks that is there, but it might be as much as 20 to 25 marks that is at stake. So I will not go to into the contents of this one, but then what are we going to cover in today's class? It starts with anticoagulants, indications, procedure, types of smears, parts of the smear, stains, identification of the cells, morphology, differential count, and parasites. Before I go to the next slide, I would like to make a mention of the anticoagulants. 2% EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid is being used. But then there are other anticoagulants in hematology. 3.8% trisodium citrate used to use for ESR. A double oxalate mixture is used for the ESR again by the Wintrop's method. Warfarin, etc., is an anticoagulant of therapeutic use. Heparin is also being used. So, like this, you people should know the various anticoagulants and mention if asked. This itself can be a theory question. Now look at this slide, a picture, series of pictures rather. What are the questions that can be asked? Fine, we'll start with this. What are the modes of collection? You can have a venous blood, an arterial blood, or a capillary blood. And this is a cubital vein from which blood is usually being taken because it is quite spacious. It does not get dislodged very frequently. And you can have a cuff over here so that in between the systolic and the diastolic pressure, it is there. What are all the other sites from which you can take blood can be a question for. The cells, of course, we are going to see it repeatedly and you should have seen it in physiology as well. This again, we shall be visiting. The parts of a smear, I marked it over here. This is the slide and in which I should have the patient's number. Initially, a drop of blood is being placed and from that a smear is being made. This is divided into three portions, namely the head, the body, and the tail. The head is a dense portion in which there is a lot of overlap of the cells. Morphology could not be made out. Second one is the body. And here it is also fairly dense, but as we go towards the tail, the cells tend to get distributed. They say, in fact, the junction between the body and the tail will be apt for the study of the morphology. And this incidentally indicates a method of counting. We shall be going to it later on. So this particular slide shows you how much can be learned and answered in a peripheral smear. Please look at this slide very carefully. Before I complete the list over here, I would like you people to kindly make a diagnosis of what you people see. A peripheral smear can be part of a complete hemogram. Complete hemogram means it is the entire hematological study that is being done. 
routine. Whenever the patient comes to a OP or during a master health checkup, it can be done. Any form of anemia, obviously, even if it is going to be hemolytic anemia. Therefore, you people should be careful. We will be asked the classification of anemias. Leukocytosis or a leukemoid reaction. Whenever there is an increase in the cells, it is being asked. Leukemias. This will not be kept as a smear, but then you cannot say the examiner should not ask us. We should know something about the basic types of leukemias. What are the parasites that can be seen in the peripheral blood? And what change can we see in the systemic diseases such as the renal? I hope you people have made a diagnosis of this. And it is a eosinophil. So, so many of them are there. We identify it not only by the bilobe nucleus, but also by the brick red granules. In fact, the more important point will be the brick red granules. What is the procedure to make a smear? First, this is called as barcoding. You find that all the details of the patient are being entered into it so that there is no technical error or a mix up of the samples. A drop of blood is kept on the slide and this is called a spreader. We pull the spreader backwards so that it touches the drop and it spreads by capillary action. And then it is pulled forward so that a smear is being made. An angle of 40 to 45 degrees is usually recommended. If it is going to be less than that, the smear will be too long. If it is going to be more obtuse, then the smear will be thick and short. So this is again the procedure explaining. You people will be having to explain this. In fact, it is not so simple to make a smear. So this is what I had mentioned earlier. I pulled a drop over here. I'm pulling it backwards, spreads by capillary action. Again, pulling it forward so that a smear is being made. And the same thing is shown as a head-on or an aerial view. And look at the multiple smears that have been made by different people or... So this is probably a perfect smear. I'm able to see the head that is thick, then the body and a thin tail. Whereas here, it is discontinuous. Here, there is some kind of dwindling that is happening. And here also, there are areas of thick and thin. And this smear itself is too short. So it is not easy to make a smear. It requires a lot of commitment and technical expertise. It is not a deviation, but I hope you people are able to identify it. At least, what is the legend in which we have heard of this Kurukshetra? It will be the Mahabharata. And this is Arjun who is getting the lesson from Krishna, so on. But I am not planning to deviate from the chapter as such. So in an army, you find that there will be different kinds of soldiers on the horses, on foot, on the camels, etc. And there will also be a different distribution of this army. So in some areas, I find it is having a bird-like outline or a configuration. Sometimes it will be having a configuration of a convergence. So that is what I wanted you people to appreciate. Now, what is this explanation meaning in today's context? So this is it. So when I make a smear, it is by sheer force that the larger cells will be moving towards the periphery and towards the tail, whereas the smaller cells such as the lymphocyte will be occupying the axis. Now this is the usual method that is being recommended. As I told you earlier, the head, the body and the tail. Somewhere in the junction between the body and the tail or between the tail and the body, it can be counted. But I'm going halfway and then turning, again coming backwards, again moving forward. By following this particular method, 
I am able to count the cells in the periphery as well as in the center. Therefore, a uniform counting is there. There is no bias. Secondly, I am avoiding counting the same cells again by this method. This is called a battlement method. So, Purukshetra, please remember the battlefield, and this is the battlement method. And when I am going to exaggerate the same thing, I go almost to the other end of the smear, turn, and come back. This is called an exaggerated battlement method. And the third one is, instead of at right angles, I count it longitudinally, parallel to the long axis of the smear. This is called a strip differential. This method is most commonly followed. Battlement method. So the cells at the periphery as well as in the center are being sampled and counted. No error in repeating the thing. Please do not answer zigzag method in the exam. That is a very colloquial one. You people should be able to explain. Even if the examiner asks, what is the battlement method? You people should be able to explain. There are some causes for error when we count. So, as I mentioned earlier, counting cells at the tail and the periphery, there will be the larger cells. So, these will be repeatedly counted. If I count the cells only along the central axis, lymphocytes will be more. Repeated counting, I can be making a mistake. Not scanning the periphery. In fact, I am supposed to scan the slide under the low power or even the high power to rule out parasites such as microfilaria. Microfilaria is an exam slide that will be kept under the high power, not under oil immersion. The cells in the head region will not be spread out and therefore the morphology cannot be clearly made out. And in the peripheral region, the RBCs are flat. And it will be only at the junction that I will be able to make out the central pallor and the peripheral rim of hemoglobinization. So these are all some of the causes for error. Technically, it can be because of staining also. Low pH means an acid pH. The cells are acidic and all the cells appear pink. I do not find any blue granules. Too alkaline means they become dark blue or bluish black. And sometimes when the smear is air dried in a humid weather, there can be air bubbles. This is a common mistake that the technician and the student will make after the staining is complete. Even though they have done it correctly, they pour off the stain and try to wash it under the tap water. When we pour off, all the leishman particles will stick on to the smear and you cannot get rid of them. Instead, what we people should do is, I shall be explaining. And what all should we explain? See the cells, the RBCs, WBCs, platelets. Go through them one by one. And whenever it is a RBC, it is a classical one. Size, shape, variation in either of them, any inclusion that can be seen, parasites. Parasite means malaria in the RBC. And normally you can get a normal smear or a smear of iron deficiency. Macrocytic is quite rare, but it may be kept. Sickle cell anemia, spherocytosis, or thalassemia, etc., they can be charts. Usually, we don't keep them as slides. Sickle cell anemia can be focused under the microscope as a spotter. Malarial parasite, again, focused as a spotter. So, this will be the importance of the RBCs in a peripheral smear. And these are all the variations you people should have in mind. What are the normal ones? Central pallor is there. When it is larger, it is a macrocyte. Small and pale microcyte. Ovoid, it is an elliptocyte. Target cells, central hemoglobinization might be present. Teardrop cells, sickle cells. Acanthocytes is blunt irregular cell. And spherocyte with no central pallor, small dark cells. So some of the variations I have explained well in my one page book as well as in the record notes. This is the first slide that I had shown you people in the WBCs. Again, in the WBCs, the morphology of the cell is important. What is the cell that you people are seeing? And you will have to do a counting. The number of them. What is the maturation? I'll come to that later. And what are the different methods of counting? I have already explained it. 
And if it is normal, fine. If it is increased, it can be neutrophilia, eosinophilia, lymphocytosis, monocytosis, or if it is decreased, it can be a leukopenia. So these are the things. So basophil means I'm finding bluish granules. The nucleus is not very clear. Neutrophil, there can be two, three, four, or even five lobes. And I find a granule with a neutral color. So that is why it is called a neutrophil. Brick red granule, eosinophilic granules. And that can be a, a bilobed or sometimes even a trilobed. Therefore, I want you to diagnose it by means of the brick red granules. Lymphocytes, the nucleus is almost similar to the size of the RBC. That can be a large lymphocyte that can be present. Still larger paler cell. In fact, there's the largest cell, a pale nucleus and a bluish gray cytoplasm, the monocyte. And there can be small granules which can be seen in the background. These are the platelets. They measure about one to two microns. You compare it with the RBC and you can make. And there's a clumping of the platelet. I hope you people are able to make out all this. Maturation, because this I use as an exercise. I ask the student to draw a picture of a myelocyte picture of a myeloblast, picture of a promyelocyte, etc. It is not very difficult. I have done it n number of times. I'm repeating it again. The myeloblast is a large cell. It has got a large nucleus. There can be one, two, or even three nucleoli. This is a nucleolus that is there. No granules. Promyelocyte is also a large cell. And I'm finding granules as well as nucleolus. Myelocyte downwards, I find that there are specific granules. The nucleolus is not clear. The nucleus becomes smaller. The granules are more specific. Specific means neutrophilic granule, eosinophilic granule, etc. Metamyelocyte, there is an indentation, but the nucleus is dark. Granules are present. In all these cells, granules will be present. And from myelocyte downwards, there will be secondary granules or specific granules. Band form becomes C-shaped. And when constrictions develop, it is a mature neutrophil. So definitely, I want you people to practice this. You should be able to draw a picture when the examiner asks, or even in the theory exam, you should be able to. You can be asked the blast morphology, what are the precursor cells, classification of leukemias or anemias, etc. And these things have in mind. Leukemoid reaction, and all of them can be kept as spotters. An AML, they can focus on our rod. CML is definitely a slide for you people. Leukemoid reaction is a chart that is commonly kept. Multiple myeloma is also a chart that we keep for the students. Platelets and parasites. Platelets I had explained, so you mine one to two microns and they can be seen in clusters. Somewhat pinkish gray is the color. Parasites. So this is the area bankruptcy, more important in microbiology. And it has got a blunt head. It has got a sheath. It has got a blunt head over here. And then there is a sharp tail. And the tail end is free of the nuclei. And all these dark dots are called the nuclei. The other structures you people can read in parasitology. This can be kept for the spotter in the examination. So these are the RBCs, I'll be able to see the parasite that is well focused. The importance of the platelets will be ITP. It can be kept as a chart for you people. Plasmodium malaria can be, or Vivax, or even falciparum can be focused. Microphile area is again a slide for you people. So this is the importance. Identification of the cells, I already explained, go through it once again. What are the precursor cells? RNET count is sometimes being asked. RNET means it depends on the number of segments. There can be two segments, three segments, four, and five segments. It is almost rudimentary. We do not use it nowadays, but some examiners ask. It is a count based on the number of segments. Leukocytosis is an increase. What are all the conditions where it can be present? And what is a leukemoid reaction? Mimicking a leukemia. Go to my book on one page, I have clearly explained what is the difference between a leukemia and a leukemoid reaction and what are the parasites we can see. 
and these are of course the RBCs. Comments. So I find that this is having a very ragged edge, not a very good smear. See, these are all broken. Maybe the technician was not very deliberate in making the smear. These are the droplets I have been speaking about earlier. This is somewhat irregular in outline. And this again, there is a break. So this is more or less tongue shaped ideal. And this is an exaggerated battlement method of doing a differential count. This is a counter count, I'm sorry, a differential counter. A differential counter that can be used for counting. In a normal smear, you people are supposed to not only do a differential count after staining, you are supposed to describe a smear because it carries 10 to 15 marks. So the RBCs, just write it as normocytic, normochromic, very mild anisocytosis, variation in shape. WBCs, usually we give it normal, but if you find increase in neutrophils, mention it as neutrophilia. Platelets are normal in number, morphology and clumping. No parasites seen. This is the way we people should describe a normal smear because it carries marks. And these are some variations we can get. Sometimes you can get a microcytic hypochromic smear, do the description. Probably it is iron deficiency anemia for you people. WBCs may be increased neutrophils, neutrophilia. If eosinophils are increased, eosinophilia. Lymphocytes are increased, lymphocytosis. Do a differential count and count it and express it accordingly. Platelets usually will be normal. Normally a parasitic smear is not kept for staining. So these are the other variants that can be kept. Just have it in mind. What are the stains for the peripheral blood and the bone marrow aspiration? These are the stains. They are called as Romanovsky stains after Romanovsky, who is a Russian physician. They are called as compound dyes because they contain two ingredients. One is eosin, another is methylene blue. So there are two components. That is why you get two different colors in a smear. They are called a compound dye and it is metachromatic because one stains for one component and the other for the other one. And these are all the various Romanovsky stains. If you are asked, you people should answer, though we are commonly using only the Leishman stain. James sir, Wright stain, Wright and James sir, Jenner, James sir, May Grenwald. These are all some modifications of the Romanovsky stains. Please do mention it. And what are the samples from which we'll be collecting the blood? Venous blood is usually used. Arterial blood is done for blood gas analysis. Serum, it is used in biochemistry mostly. Plasma, we can use it for the clotting factors, etc. Buffy coat is used for counting the platelets or sometimes for the LE cell, etc. I've explained it in my class on the PCV. Please go back to it in the chapter on game. So these are the various samples and I want you people to kindly know it because the examiner will definitely be asking different questions to different students. It is not difficult. The problem is we think it is not important and we pay the penalty for it. So this is the way you do. All of you are very familiar with it. The smear is air dried and you pour the leishman. You wait for a period of two minutes. It is for fixation. It contains acetone-free methyl alcohol. It helps in fixing the cells. Fixing means it preserves it in as lifelike a manner as possible. And it is diluted with a buffer solution. The pH should be 6.8. It is called Sorensen's buffer. The pH is 6.8. This is extremely important. Please do remember. Otherwise, we are supposed to do it with impurities. That is a tap water. Distilled water should never be the answer because it has got a pH of 4 and it will be causing an acidic staining. You'll have to wash after a period of 8 to 10 minutes. Again, please. Remember, pH is 6.8 and you should not use distilled water. If your staining is very good, what are you observing? I'm finding an oily scum that is there in the staining material. That means your stain is working well. This is what I said. After the staining is complete, I should not pour this off 
instead with a beaker of water i should try, just try to flush it off and after that i can wash it under the running tap water that is how you people should do the washing the oil is come it indicates active stain and what is the importance of all the various things i given a few condition which you people can remember because definitely the examiner will ask asking each student one he will be asking neutrophilia another student neutrophilia eosinophilia etc and these are some of the causes i would like you people to kindly by heart detailed ones are given in my book on one page and any other text you people can see don't straight away answer leukemias basophils for example are seen in type 1 hypersensitivity you can also see them in cml parasites you can see them you can have eosinophilia or in allergic conditions like bronchial asthma blowflus pneumonia sometimes you can also get it in a case of cml so neutrophils you find in a case of chronic myeloid leukemia but your answer should be appendicitis bacterial infections myocardial infarction etc lymphocytes are found in any chronic inflammation such as tuberculosis syphilis viral infections and sometimes in malaria also please do not mix up don't answer one for the other and lose the marks monocytes are found in kala azar malaria typhoid tuberculosis etc and they can also be found in myelomonocytic leukemia and monocytic leukemias this is a very important chart you people will have to simply sit down by heart nothing else the count is normally 4000 to 10000 neutropenia when it is less than 2000 mild less than 1000 we call it as moderate neutropenia less than 500 is severe neutropenia and it is almost absent in a condition called a granulocytosis neutropenia what are all the causes these are all the list of causes again please read up typhoid aplastic anemia a granulocytosis hyperspinism drugs such as chloramphenicol i taken it in my class on aplastic anemia in one page chemotherapy a granulocytosis please read this has been asked as a university question lymphopenia it can be after irradiation chemotherapy also in patients because of aids we call it a burnt out syndrome and there is a normal differential count you people should remember absolute eosinophil count is 40 to 400 per cubic millimeter when i ask absolute eosinophil count students answer 2 to 6% percent. 2 to 6% percent is the differential count whereas absolute count is the absolute number so you can get a slide like this you can get a chart like this obviously you people can imagine the play of questions that can be asked what is the method of counting what is the normal neutrophil count mention the conditions where it is increased mention the condition where it is decreased where do you find immature cells what is the immature form can you draw a picture of it so on so forth the same thing applies to the lymphocytes and the monocytes that is why the previous tabular column is of utmost important eosinophils i had shown you earlier also this is the picture of the eosinophil a lot of conditions are there if you go to my book on one page at least 15 to 20 courses will be there and you can choose at least five compatible compatible courses for you people and coming to the allotment of marks so the marks will be allotted for staining for doing the differential count for making a description of the entire smear that includes rbc wbc platelets etc and answering the question that the examiner asks if i go for an exam i give two marks for the entire exercise and eight marks for answering so there can be questions on the techniques so what are the causes for error what are the causes various stains that can be used what is a thick smear thick smear means we use it for malaria so within a small field i am able to see a lot of cells therefore screening is made easier what are the parts of the smear what is the importance of it what are the different methods of counting battlement method rbc what are the morphological changes and the inclusions 
anemia classification definite leukemia you people should be knowing what are the various values abnormal conditions where they are present increase or decrease platelets parasites parasites they can ask you the various species of it so questions this carries marks hope it gives you a total idea about it this is an automatic counter called as sysmix there are two companies one is sysmix and other is beckman scooter they are automatic counter when you keep a drop of blood it is sucked in and the machine does the counting the principle is flow cytometry because different light is getting scattered and because of the density and the size of the cell you are able to identify it it is of short duration and multiple values can be obtained many samples can be run in a short time and in spite of all this the peripheral smear is the most important part of a hematology exercise and this is the hematology histogram which you can see in a sysmix or in a coulter counter so because of the graph we will be able to make out whether it is a neutrophil eosinophil lymphocyte etc and look at the number of values over here again i have written the same thing all this can be found out when you run a sample through the sysmix or a coulter counter and so on the questions will be going on see ultimately after the exam this is what you people are going to say i have passed my driver's test and look what has happened to the car over here thank you